In this screencast, I want to go over two things. One, uh, the pseudocode for the shortest augmenting path algorithm to find the max flow in a network flow problem, and then prove, in fact, that it does find the maximum flow. So this slide contains the pseudocode. I'm not going to go through, through it in a lot of detail. I suggest that um, at some point you come back to this slide and pause the video and take a deeper look at it. <clears throat> but I want to just point out the general idea of it. So remember how Edmunds Carp works. Uh, the first thing it does is it needs to find an augmenting path. Once it finds an augmenting path, it updates the network flow and then again tries to find an augmenting path, updates the network flow. It does that until it cannot find an augmenting path, at which point it returns the flow. Now, what I'm going to show in later slides is, in fact, that that is a max flow. But here, let's look at this. So here's the uh, part of the code that finds the augmenting path. You can see it uses a queue. So, right, it's using breadth-first search to find shortest augmenting path. And remember, it's working in the residual network in general. So what it's going to have to do is, for it, when it's at a vertex, go through all the forward edges. And remember, those are edges which have some remaining capacity. They're not full. And use those to increase the length of the path. And then after it's finished with forward edges, then it does the same for backward edges. And remember, backward edge from I to J is comes from a forward edge from J to I that has flow on it. So that's a little confusing, but make sure you sort of trace through this and see. And again, after you label the vertex so that we don't revisit it, then and you know where its flow came from, then you put the vertex on the queue to up so that the breadth first search will work correctly. Once you found the augmenting path, then and you find that when, once the sync has been labeled. So if the sync's been labeled, now we find the augmenting path. So now we can update the flow. And this code here just goes backwards from the so sync and to get to the source and checks whether basically uh, where the flow came from and whether it came over a forward edge, in which case it increment adds the new flow new amount of flow, which is Ln, to the flow on that uh, edge. And if it's a backward edge, then it subtracts that flow from the edge. I'm not going to prove this now, but um, the shortest augmenting path algorithm uh, never exceeds n times m over 2 augmenting paths. That proof is relatively complex. I'm not going to talk about it. So, but, so that the large loop... Um, where you find an augmenting path and then update, that executes at most n times m over two times. Now, the loop itself finds the shortest augmenting path, so that has to, you have to do breadth-first search in that, and we know that breadth-first search is basically big O of the number of edges. So what that gives you is that the overall efficiency is n times m squared. Um, this is using adjacency lists. Uh, more, lots more efficient. Other, many other algorithms exist. Uh, many of them more efficient. Some is close to a big O of n times m time. So, in order to prove that in, we do in fact find the maximum flow, we're going to need uh, the concept of a cut. And this is the concept of a cut in a flow network. Um, and there are more general uh, definitions of a cut in when you're in. Um, more general graphs. But for a flow network, we'll let x be a set of vertices in the network that includes the source but does not include the sink, and x bar the complement of x. So the idea is you divide the vertices into two set disjoint sets that make up together, whose union is the entire set of vertices. Then a cut that's determined by this partition, x, x bar, the cut induced by this partition is the set of all the edges with a tail in x and a head in x bar. So in other words, they're going from the source side of the partition to the sink side of the partition. The capacity of the cut is just the sum of the capacities of the edges, and a minimum cut is a cut of the smallest capacity in a given network. 
So now we'll look at a specific example to get a better feel for what this means. So here again is the same network we've been working with. Let's take the following really simple cut to start. We'll let x be just the source and x bar be all the other vertices. Then the cut is a set of the t these two edges, 1 to 2 and 3 to 4. So in other words, you can think of the cut as being like that. And the capacity of that cut is just the 2 plus 3, so the capacity of that cut is 5. Another possibility is let's just put the sink all by itself. So now we'll have x will contain all the edge, all the vertices except the sink, and x bar will be the sink. Now these two edges are going to make up the cut. You can see that here, 3, 6, and 5, 6. And the capacity of that cut is going to be 4 plus 2. Another cut that we could look at is 1, 2, and 4. So we could look at these, and then the remaining part of the cut is 3, 5, and 6, and that would have a capacity of 9. You can see that. These are the edges that cross the cut. So you can see there are many cuts in a flow network, and what we're going to do is we're going to prove a theorem that says the minimum cut, the cut with the smallest capacity, is equal to the maximum flow. So the max flow min cut theorem. The value of a maximum flow in a network is equal to the capacity of its minimum cut. The shortest augmenting path algorithm yields both a maximum flow and a minimum cut. That's the key thing that we have to show. And that is the max flow is the final flow produced by the algorithm, and the minimum cut is formed by all the edges from the labeled vertices to the unlabeled vertices. So the partition that determines the cut is the labeled vertices to the unlabeled vertices. So there are two major steps to the proof. And I'm going to first try to give you a little bit of intuition about what these are, and then we'll go ahead and do the proof. So the first step is to show that for any flow network, and for any feasible flow, in other words, one that satisfies the capacity constraints and the flow conservation constraints, and for any cut, then the capacity of the cut has to be bigger than or equal to the flow, value of the flow. So the value of the flow has to be less than or equal to the value of the cut for any flow and for any cut on a flow network. Step two is that the shortest augmenting path algorithm will find a flow with value v star and determines a cut with capacity c star such that v star is equal to c star. Those two steps together are going to imply that V star must be a maximum flow. Step one basically says that any flow must be less than or equal to the capacity of any cut. So arbitrary V and C, V has to be less than or equal to C. Step two says the shortest augmenting path algorithm finds a flow and a cut where they're equal. This implies that the value of any flow must be less than V star. Why? Because V star is equal to C star but the value of any flow has to be less than C star. Similarly, for C star, the value of any other cut must be bigger than V star, right? Because all cuts have to be bigger than any flow, and but V star is equal to C star, so all the cuts have to be bigger than C star. This is easy to understand if we look at a picture. That'll be on the next slide. Picture. So step one is basically this picture. The x's represent flows, and the capacities of cuts represent these o's. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to prove that all the x's have to be less than or equal to any of the flows. And then step two is that the shortest augmenting path algorithm will show that there is a flow and a cut where x, the x, is equal to the o. So because of that, right, you've got an O here, so all the other X's have to be less than X, so X must be a max flow. You've got an X here, so all the other cuts must be bigger than or equal to that X, so this must be the minimum cut. Here's a picture of how the proof of step one is going to go. So we're going to have some arbitrary cut, and there'll be an arbitrary flow. 
And the idea now is going to be that these edges, the flows on these edges, minus the flow on this edge, must be the value of the flow. But that's got to be less than the capacity of these edges, which is the value of the cut. So intuitively, that makes sense. This slide has the rigorous proof on it, and you'll see it goes exactly the way I said in the picture. Namely, that a flow must be equal to the flow on the edges from x to v minus x, minus the flow on the edges that go from v minus x to x. But this number here, the flow, has to be non-negative. could be zero, but it's got to be zero or positive. So it's got to be non-negative. So if you subtract a non-negative number, you only make things bigger. So this first part's got to be bigger than that difference. And then, but we know by the um, capacity constraints that the capacity of the edge has to be bigger than the flow on the edge. So that must be, this sum must be less than or equal to the sum of the capacities, and that's equal to the capacity of the cut. Thus the value of any flow must be less than or equal to the value of the capacity of any cut. So now we're going to actually prove step two, and it's the same picture we had before, but now we're going to be a little bit more specific about the vertices in the, that determine the cut. So this would be the x part, and these are going to consist of the labeled vertices when the algorithm stops. And remember, the algorithm stops when it doesn't get to the sink, so the unlabeled vertices are going to contain the sink. So this is going to partition the vertices into some vertices that contain the source, those are labeled, and some vertices that contain the sink. And now what we are going to do is look carefully at these edges, and we're going to show that because of the way the algorithm works, that these edges that flow across the cut towards the sink, these have to be full. They're, those edges have to be at full capacity. And this edge that goes backwards, or any edge that goes backwards, has to have zero flow on it. So, again, we're going to form the cut uh, by using the vertices reachable from the source in the final iteration of the short, shortest augmenting path algorithm. Uh, since sink, the sink is not labeled, x contains the source but not the sink. Thus, x and its complement form a cut. Okay. Now, by definition of the set x, each edge ij from x to v minus x has zero unused capacity. Why? Because otherwise the algorithm would have reached the vertex j in v minus x. Right? Because it would, there's, there would have been a forward edge in the residual graph. By the same token, each edge ji from v minus x to x must have zero flow on it, since if there was non-zero flow, there would be a backward edge in the residual graph, and vertex j again would be labeled. So we know that the flows on the edges from x to v minus x must be at full capacity, whereas the flow going the other direction from v minus x to x must have zero flow. So we use exactly the same setup that we did in the previous slide, namely that the flow is equal to the flow of the edges from x to v minus x minus the flow on the edges from v minus x to x. These edges that go from x to v minus x, they're at full capacity, okay? And so the x sub e is equal to, actually equal to the capacity of e. And these edges that go from v minus x back to x, right, we know those have to have zero flow on them. Otherwise, there would be backward edges, which would allow you to label something in v minus x. So those edges all have to have zero flow on them. Well, the sum of a bunch of zeros is zero. And this, so what we're left with is the sum of the edges from x to v minus x. And they must have flow equal to the capacity of those edges. Well, that's just the definition of the cut. So we've shown that the flow is equal to the capacity of the cut from the, un, from the labeled vertices to the unlabeled vertices. So that's the max flow min cut theorem. Uh, one comment um, that's important, and we'll cover it more later, 
is this is an example of something called duality, where you have two problems that don't necessarily seem to have much to do with one another, but in fact, that sol solving one of the problems solves the other problem. In this case, solving the max flow problem solves the minimum cut problem.